Hello, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. iPad apps for struggling readers and writers. And I hear a little bit of feedback there. Just want to make sure that everyone else isn't hearing it. I'll get some feedback from any of you. There's a chat there in the bottom. Please feel free to put in any questions. We're going to take a quick poll. And there's a little bit of feedback there, so I'm just going to try and move my microphone away from the external speaker here. And I guess it's fine if they just want to upload a whole batch of customer app prices. Um, no, but my question about the share was we, I mean, we just had this discussion earlier where we said, well, for actual TAM, now revised TAM, I hear a little bit will of you do? I believe okay. maybe from the okay. actual. You know, Attending? Yeah, it doesn't so showing up anywhere. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it, it does make sense when this is set to revise to ignore so that share percent. Has the mic quick poll to see who's joining us. And um, if you don't mind, the poll's going to go up. We just want to see where you're joining us from, what role you play, and why you're interested in joining us for IPAPs for Struggling Readers and Writers. So I believe the poll question should be up there right now. If you don't mind taking a quick minute. Just respond. Great, so we see we have some parents joining us, AT specialists, some consumers, higher education, related therapists. That's wonderful to see. So we associate with other, we're not teachers, we're not AT specialists. Going to start sharing my screen so you can see my iPad. As mentioned, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Can you hear? And if you're just joining us, please mute yourself so that we don't hear any background from other people talking. So what I'm going to start with this afternoon is just a brief introduction. So I'm Diana Petschauer. I'm a Resna certified assistive technology professional and founder of the company Assistive Technology for Education. So I have consultants and I who travel throughout New England and nationally and we provide assistive technology assessment for students to access education and adults to access employment. Feel free to check our website out and also join us on Facebook and you'll get up to date with the webinars and trainings that we're providing. We're also on Twitter or LinkedIn if you prefer to join us there. Thank you, Andy. I hear the echo as well. I'm not quite sure why that's happening with the microphone. So I'm going to get started. Before we dive into apps, I start with the built-in accessibility features of the iPad. They're found in your settings. For me, that's the gear icon that is the bottom on the toolbar. Hoping that the um, people who are running the show in the background can maybe fix the microphone as I'm going along here. So I'm going to tap on settings. If you're following along, you can do this on your iPad as well. On the left hand side, I'm on general. OK, in the right hand side, I'm going to tap on accessibility. So 
left hand side general right hand side accessibility and I did get rid of that second window there I think for the tip Bridget Margaret mentioned the sound is cutting in and out so I'm just going to stop sharing my screen real quick check the microphone to see if we can fix this before we continue All right, I'm going to share my screen again. And I did turn off my own external speakers, but that didn't seem to stop the echo. So I'm just going to keep going here with the microphone. It might be something on the Adobe end. Thank you, John. I'm glad the echo is gone through. Maybe it's because somebody else who's joining needs to mute their microphone. So look for that icon up on the top of your screen and the little drop down arrow next to it. And you want to make sure you mute your microphone. So back into my accessibility features. Thank you, Hima. That's something on the Adobe end, yeah, to mute everybody else's microphones. I'm the presenter today, so I don't have control over that. So I'm going to keep going to give you as much information as I can. So in the accessibility features, left-hand side general, right-hand side I tapped on accessibility. There are several accessibility features built into iOS devices that can make these devices accessible to students and struggling readers and writers prior to even adding any app. You want to make sure that you know of them because they work within the app provide some accessibility. The first one is VoiceOver. That is the built-in screen reader that is available on all iOS devices. It's very beneficial for someone who's completely blind to be able to listen to everything out loud and then decide what they want to choose. Before I turn VoiceOver on, I scroll all the way down to Accessibility Shortcuts, the very last one there. Under Accessibility Shortcut, I put on VoiceOver. I put a check mark next to VoiceOver, as well as Guided Access. And you can see that you can choose any of these other features to put on your Accessibility Shortcut. What this means is you can hit your Home button three times fast, and you will be able to activate that accessibility feature. So that button at the bottom of your iPad in the middle is your home button. And you can hit it three times fast to start any of these accessibility features when you put them on your shortcut. This is especially helpful for voiceover. When people start to use voiceover, they have a difficult time getting back into the settings to shut it off. And they panic because they can't make their iPad stop talking. So with the voiceover on accessibility shortcut, I'm just going to hit my home button. Then I'm going to hit it three times fast. So voiceover is now on. I can right swipe to scroll. And left swipe to go back. And if I want to choose something after I hear it read out loud, I double tap anywhere on the screen. Location. Current location. Two dash ninety eight not capture mode. Not capture mode. Wall square. So I'm going to go back into my settings. Tap on voiceover. So I could turn it off voiceover by double tapping here, or I can hit my home button three times fast. One, two, three and now voiceover is off. So 
So very quickly and easily, you can turn VoiceOver on or off. And sometimes you only need VoiceOver once in a while in certain apps that require it. Other times, somebody else may pick up the iPad, and they're not familiar with VoiceOver, and they need to turn it off quickly. You can see you can change the speaking rate. And you can also here connect to a refreshable Braille device. If you're not familiar, a refreshable Braille device is a device that students and adults use who are Braille readers. They connect Bluetooth or wirelessly to an iPad or to a computer and allows them to read everything on the iPad that they see, whether a website, email, in an app, a book, worksheets or handouts, in real-time Braille. So they're able to feel that in Braille with a refreshable pin. They can also type in Braille, but it pops up as text. So I'm just going to show you an example of a refreshable Braille display so you can visualize it if you are not familiar. There's an example on our website. And so a student who is using a refreshable Braille display could be completing homework or writing an essay. Here's one here, a couple. And the teacher does not have to be familiar with Braille in order to read the work because it will be typed text. It also replaces those large, bulky Braille books. They can now have it in electronic form. So you can see where the pins would pop up for them to read Braille. So very important for you to know, they can use VoiceOver to have everything read out loud to them. And if they're a Braille reader, they can connect to a Braille device. Going back into my settings, underneath VoiceOver is Zoom. So many of you may be familiar with the reverse pinch um, zoom that you use on the iPad just to increase the size of the screen for reading. Sometimes it doesn't work in certain apps and also on certain websites and you still need that extra zoom. So by turning zoom on, you can use three fingers to double tap to increase the size of the screen and you scroll using three fingers. So you can have everything enlarged and three finger double tap again puts it back to typical. Now you can see you also can choose to show controller. And you see the little controller show up on the right side of my screen. And this allows me to use this controller to control the zoom. So I can use it to go around the screen. And you can also change the maximum zoom level there all the way up to 15 points or 15 times. So this can be very helpful for someone who's low vision to be able to use this additional zoom feature. Thank you in regards to the sound. I'm going to go back in real quickly to double check the sound on my end and make sure that it's all the way up. I can adjust the speaker volume here. It is all the way up there. And double check the microphone. Hopefully that's a little bit better. You go back to sharing my screen. So below in Zoom, there's invert colors. And with invert colors, you can change the screen to opposite contrast. So if you try this on your end, you will see it change from black on white to white on black. And everything else becomes very bright colors on top of that black. It doesn't work while I'm using Reflector to show you. But if you have an iPad with you, you can try that yourself. Many low vision individuals do prefer to have the inverse contrast on. You can also turn it to grayscale if you prefer black and white or grayscale. And below that is speech. And this is different than voiceover. Many people don't realize this is built into the iPad. So you can turn speak selection on. By default, it is off. You can turn on speak screen. And you can adjust the speaking rate here. You can also turn on highlight content. This will work for you in certain apps like iBooks and will also work on the internet. 
So to demonstrate, I'll go back out to the internet. So if you or your student is researching and you need to have text read out loud, there are two ways of doing it using speak selection. We've now turned it on. And I keep it on personally in the background. Press and hold on the text and just drag those blue dots to select the text. And to the right there, you can tap speak. For use during class or a meeting, record audio and get back to a specific part of the lecture or meeting instantly. Capital E. That's me. I highlighted an extra E there. So you can select the text. Or if you prefer, you can go to the top of the page or be at the top of the website. And with two fingers swipe down, there we go. So you can see that gray toolbar appears with the play, rewind, fast forward, and you can adjust the speed using the turtle or the rabbit. This little arrow docks it to the side of the page, or you can X out of it or close out of it using the X. So just by turning on speak selection, you're offering text-to-speech to students as they're researching on the internet and also reading content inside of certain apps. And that's built right in. Back to my accessibility features, there's also large text. So if you want to increase the text in your messages or emails or notes section, this is very helpful for a lot of students. There's also button shapes, increase contrast. And under hearing, for those of the students who are using hearing aids, if they have Bluetooth hearing aids, they can connect. And you can also change the mono audio so that all the sound is on the left or the right if they hear better out of one ear or another. And certainly turn on those subtitles and captioning when they're available. Guided access under learning can be a very helpful feature. This is for your button-happy students who want to get out of the app or the website that you have them in. When you turn on guided access, you'll choose a four-digit passcode. Don't forget the passcode. Write it down. Make it your ATM card pin. Whatever makes you remember it, don't forget it. You'll use that four-digit PIN or code when you start guided access. And again, this is one I have on my triple-click shortcut. So I can just press the home button three times fast and start guided access while I'm in an app with a student or a website. If the student hits the home button to go to another game or app, they have to know the code in order to get out. And you don't give them the code. So you can use guided access to keep students on task. There's also a feature that allows you to choose something that you want to disable. So if there's a go back and go forward button, and you only want the student to make positive progress, you can disable the go back button. So guided access is a very helpful feature. Switch control for any of your students from difficulty with physical access. Certainly can connect to switches, Bluetooth and direct connect. There's switches for just about every part of the body, finger, elbow, head, foot. If your student has a difficult time accessing the iPad traditionally, you can control a switch and use switch scanning to access the iPad features and apps. There's also assistive touch. When you turn assistive touch on, you see this little black square with a white circle appear or it should, hopefully. There it is. You can drag it anywhere on the screen, and it will stay there on the home screen if you're in an app, etc. It'll fade a little when you're not using it. And what's great is that you need to tap just once, and you're able to get to these features very quickly. Thank you, Carol, for adding that feature regarding guided access in iOS 8. If you've updated to 8, Hopefully most of you have now. It was a little glitchy at the beginning. There's a timer feature for how long you want the student to be in that app. And you can actually set timers built right into the clocks on your iPad, if you're not familiar. There's timers built right in there that will turn the iPad off automatically after a certain time. So great tip. Thank you, Carol, for sharing. So
guided access. Oh, not guided access. Sorry about that. Here we go. So you can get to Siri or the control center or notification center or home very quick and easy. And Siri is very helpful for someone with a physical disability because you can contr control everything about the iPad using your voice. Siri, search for this. Siri, send an email to. Siri, open this app. Siri, I need directions to. So by turning on this accessibility feature, assistive touch, you have access to this little square and getting to those key features very quickly. So we just did a general overall review of the accessibility features. These are all built into the iOS devices. Remember that means the iPad, iPad mini, iPod touch, and iPhone. So no matter what size you're using, you can use these accessibility features. And some of them you'll use in the app that I'm going to show you. So we'll dive into those apps. Google Drive is the first one that I recommend. You can also use Dropbox. For individuals who are completely blind, Google Drive is not as accessible. So they typically use Dropbox. Both are free. Many schools are going Google and using Google Drive. So that's why I recommend that one as well. I'm just going to be using my search feature to swipe down and search for the apps that I'm going to show you today. Faster for me because I have hundreds on here in different folders. And so I've opened up my Google Drive. Just want to try to get rid of that title there. That it's not interfering with the but apparently it's not going to go away. So Google Drive and Dropbox are both free. You can see I just opened up to my Drive, PDF, Word Docs, Google Docs, Excel spreadsheets. I'm just going to tap on a PDF here. Now remember, Google Drive and Dropbox are cloud storage. So this means that you can save all of your documents. Students can save all of their documents, worksheets, handouts, pages they're writing. And it's saved in this cloud storage. So if anything happens to their device, computer gets a virus, iPad breaks, they can go to the school computer, public library, or home and be able to get into their Google Drive or Dropbox, and they're going to find that document waiting for them. It hasn't been lost. So it's really important to use one or the other. I use both as a professional. I always back everything up. Um, and I do recommend using one or the other on the iPad. You can have the Google Drive app and get to your documents. And you will need one of them in order to pull documents into these apps that I'm going to show you. So I'm in Google Drive. I've opened up a PDF. This could be any PDF worksheet that a teacher or instructor is sharing with a student. And they now want to fill this in using the iPad and some accessibility tools. So the little I to the top right, it looks like a lowercase i, you tap on there. And in the second row down, third one over, there's a little box with an arrow pointing out. And it says open in. I'm going to tap open in. And below that, third one over again, I'm going to tap open in. And now I have the option of opening this PDF in an app. And I have a list of apps here. You can scroll through to see what you have on your iPad that you can open this PDF in. I'm going to choose to open it in. I annotate. PDF. So the little i and little a written in that red square. If you haven't already received it, there will be a handout with a list of these apps and a description, the picture icon, and a link to get to it in the App Store. And we'll be discussing these and more apps for the next week if you join us in the week-long forum. So I'm going to tap on I Annotate PDF. And it's now going to pull that worksheet into iAnnotate. 
So I have a toolbar to my right, and I'm able to use these tools to fill in this worksheet. Again, this could be a worksheet or handout the student needs to fill in. The pinch zoom works. So you can zoom in on a particular part, have less on the page, or for someone who's low vision that needs to fill in certain parts at a time. This is especially helpful for math. I have students taking math tests and quizzes this way because they cannot line up their math due to low vision. The top icon there is a pencil. If I tap on the pencil, I can choose what color ink. I can choose the thickness of my line. So typically, if you're writing on an iPad, you're using a stylus. There's several different styluses you can use to write on the iPad or to access the iPad. Go to the internet real quick to show you a couple examples. This one is the pencil grip ergo stylus. It has a built-in pencil grip. You could certainly just get a thin stylus and put your own pencil grip on there. iFaraday has a lot of adaptive styluses. There's light, shallow angle styluses called the salt. Very lightweight, and you don't have to touch the tip directly on the iPad. It works at any angle. And you can see a bendable stylus there that you could shape around a student's hand or use it as a utensil. So various styluses that you can use to write on the iPad. And if we're in iAnnotate, open that app back up. We could use a stylus while we're using the pencil feature. So we chose our ink. We chose the thickness of our line there with the slider. And I could begin handwriting. There's an eraser if I make a mistake. Or you can use the undo button. Certainly, if this is math, you could be doing the math. There's a highlighter underneath there. You can, of course, change the color, highlight important information, and underline. Change the color if you need to. Underline important things. Below that is the feather. And this is designed for signature. But you see, if I tap anywhere to add a signature, certainly that's helpful to enlarge. But you could just use it to enlarge any part of the worksheet or handout that you want to fill in. Sticky notes below that. Maybe the student wants to leave themselves sticky notes. This is also a great app that teachers and students use in order to pass work back and forth for editing. And the teacher can circle, add comments, add voice notes, things of that nature. Andy Bourne has heard great things about the Paper 53 stylus. Thank you for sharing that, Andy. I'll have to check that out. Below the sticky notes is the text. You can change the font style and, of course, the size and the color. Thank you for that link, Andy, for everyone else to check out. So once I've adjusted my font settings, I can begin typing here. So you can see I'm typing there. One of the other built-in accessibility features of the iPad, if you have an iPad 3 or newer, is the built-in voice recognition. That is the microphone that is to the left of my space bar on this keyboard. When you tap the microphone, you can begin speaking using your voice. Speak my word. So I tapped the microphone and said, speak my words. And you can see those words are now on that line. So if you have a student who benefits from using voice recognition, it's built in. You don't need to create a voice profile. It does get better each time you use it. It remembers acronyms that I use now. And it's certainly helpful for students who would type longer papers, use more mature words. Maybe they know what photosynthesis means, but they're scared to try and spell it. So they avoid using it, where if they could use their voice, they would use it in their papers. Um, certainly for someone with physical disability, difficult time typing or writing, using voice recognition is very powerful. There's other icons underneath the text. You can print if you're connected to an air printer. As long as the printer 
is on the same Wi-Fi network as the iPad. Also the camera feature in order to take pictures of worksheets or handouts and use with this app. The mail underneath there. So you want to make sure the iPad is connected to an email address. If the student has a personal device, it can be theirs. If it's a teacher iPad used for several students, it can be the teacher email. Or you can set up a generic email, fifth grade at such and such school dot com. And it's going to be used for students to email their work out to teachers after using this app. You will email the annotated or the flattened. Um, if you email the original, of course, that's blank. And the annotated can be changed on the other end if the teacher's editing. Flattened cannot be changed anymore. They are final. Question there in the chat, what do you use to OCR JPEGs or PDFs in order to use text-to-speech? Um, you can't do optical character recognition on the JPEG. You'd want to save it as a PDF. And you can save it as an accessible PDF in order to use these accessibility features in apps. Um, if you're asking about software, I like Abby Transformer Plus and OB, also Adobe Acrobat. Uh, there are some apps that you can use to take pictures and do OCR. And I'll be showing a couple of those throughout the presentation today. Great question. Uh, so there are many features on the toolbar already. But if you hit the plus sign at the top, there are many more that you can add. So you might see other tools here as a student or professional that you would use to complete these PDFs. In addition to I annotate PDF or any of the other apps where you might be typing into them, just going to go back to my typing icon here. Anytime you have the opportunity to type, whether you're on the internet, filling out a form, in an app, filling out a worksheet, maybe you're in a word processing app, there's Google Docs, there's Pages, there's Word Docs. Anytime this keyboard pops up, you have the option of using an external keyboard. You don't have to use the on-screen keyboard. You can use an external Bluetooth keyboard if the student needs tactile keyboard, especially if they need tactile guidance on that keyboard if they're low vision or blind. You can also do a few things with this keyboard now. By putting your thumbs in the middle of the keyboard, you can separate it into two. So if you or your student types better with your thumbs, you can separate it and put it back together with your thumbs as well. And now you have the opportunity to download alternative keyboard apps. You download the alternative keyboard app, allow access to it in your settings. I will show you that. And then the way to get to the keyboards is using that globe that's next to the microphone at the bottom of the keyboard. I already have several alternative keyboard apps loaded. So I'm going to tap on the globe. And you can see it changes my keyboard. And this one is called Keydogo Plus. K-E-E-D-O-G-O. You can see the colorful keys, including the color-coded vowels and word prediction at the top. If I tap on one, two, three, and then my gear icon, I can change some of these settings. I can change it from colored to gray. I can also change the layout from QWERTY to alphabetical. The key label case, it could always be capital. Prediction height, small or large, and maximum number of suggestions. So it's currently on five. I could go all the way up to 10, or as many as fit. And you can choose about the learning of prediction, correctly spelled words, all words, or if you want to turn that off. Great question. Rosalind has about the prediction. Um, so for very poor spellers, each app that I've used for word prediction does vary. Uh, this one in particular 
is working as an alternative keyboard so that you don't have to pull in a completely separate word prediction app. Because there are other apps that will allow you to use word prediction, but you have to open a separate app to use it. So I've been using this with quite a few students. Um, this one more with elementary students. And the next one I'm going to show you, which is called Keeble, has pretty robust word prediction even for older students. And they're both made by the same company, AssistiveWare. How did I get into this dropdown for the alternative keyboards? So I went into the App Store and I downloaded the alternative keyboards first, which are Keydogo Plus and Keeble. And I'm getting to them by tapping on the globe. But you do have to allow access to these keyboards in your settings. So I'm going to show you that. I'm going to get through the keyboards and I'm going to show you how to do that in your settings. So if I tap on the one, two, three again, you can see that I have options for this keyboard. And the globe brings me to one more. I have the swipe keyboard. If you've never used swipe, it's really neat. Really beneficial for students or adults who may have a difficult time lifting their finger off the keys or just want to do it quicker. So I'm going to type the word this, and you'll be able to see on the screen my finger dragging from one letter to the other without lifting my finger. It tracks the path, it offers word prediction, and you can see it putting the type there up on the line. So it just typed, this is so cool. So another option for a keyboard. And many people love using the swipe keyboard. So if you want to access those keyboards, again, you go to the app store like typical, download the app, and then you go into your settings. Left hand side, you're on general. And you scroll on the right hand side until you see keyboard, which is under date and time. And you tap on keyboard. And at the top keyboards, you see I have five of them right now. And you would go to add new keyboard. And if you've downloaded one, it'll be waiting there for you. And there are a few other ones that are there, like the new read and write, which also has word prediction, that just came out by text help. Thank you, Bridget, for that tip about adding words that are unique to your vocabulary. Very good point. So in addition to I annotate, I'm also a fan of Claro PDF, C-L-A-R-O. If you want similar features to I annotate, but you also need that PDF read out loud, you can see here the toolbar would be accessed under the pencil. And there's a play button at the bottom here for text to speech. I don't think you could hear that on your end. But you can have text to speech along with the PDF to have those questions read out loud and tools to fill it in. So if you need that, then you would want to check out Claro PDF. Yep, the alphabetical keyboard that you can have in alphabetical in versus QWERTY, if that's what you're asking. K-E-E-D-O-G-O, -E -E Keydogo Plus. Thank you, Maureen. The next app I'm going to show you is called Voice Dream Reader. So at the top there, Voice, Dream with the D, and then Reader. Voice Dream Reader opens up to my bookshelf. <clears throat> Again, something else I want to point out before I go in depth in the that particular app is that it links to Bookshare.
If you haven't heard of Bookshare, definitely check out Bookshare.org. A free online library for your students with print disabilities, K through 12, as well as post-secondary. Schools can have a free organizational account, so professionals can download books for students. Students can have an individual account, so they can download books. Those chapter books, novels, things they might be using for book reports, or pleasure reading, or research, periodicals, magazines, as well as all of those large textbooks, math, science, social studies, English, those books are here, many of them. And you can download them in accessible format, audio and digital, which we're going to use in the app today, and also in braille or large print. There will be a handout to answer that chat question. Um, it's going to offer all the apps that I'm talking about, a description, a link to them, and we'll continue discussing them all week in a week-long forum if you're interested in joining. So check out Bookshare. Make sure your students are connected. Your students who qualify are those who have a print disability. I'm opening up Voice Dream Reader as I'm talking about Bookshare. So the students with a print disability, those with dyslexia or LD, specific LD, reading several grade levels below their peers, struggling with fluency and comprehension, physical disability, can't turn the pages of the book, blind or low vision students, and those with cortical visual impairment and traumatic brain injury. Many schools have many students who qualify for Bookshare, and it's free. There's free software if you use it on a Mac or PC that reads the books aloud, and you can use it with apps. This is one of those apps. Voice Dream Reader accesses Bookshare books. It also accesses documents in your Google Drive or Dropbox so that those handouts, worksheets they need read out loud in accessible format, you can use this to do that. When you get started, it's on your bookshelf. Bottom right is your gear icon. Connect to your Dropbox or Google Drive and Bookshare. You literally just tap on it, enable, put in that email and password, and you are connected. Start downloading. Same with Google Drive, that same email and password that you use to get into Google Drive, or, yep, anywhere you're going to get into Google Drive, and you'll be connected. Yes, in order to use Bookshare, it is available to students who are in K-12 through or post-secondary education. If you're an individual with a print disability, as an adult, you can still use the service. It's about $75 a year. So we connected to our account in Voice Dream Reader. On the left, you see a plus sign, add something to my bookshelf. That's how I would pull something in. From Bookshare, Gutenberg is another great free resource for digital books for all students, everyone. And then there's Dropbox and Google Drive, as well as the web browser, etc. So I'm going to show you what a book looks like, as well as a Word doc and PDF. And I'm going to open up, let's see, we'll go to the outsider. Now this would typically look black text on gray or white. I made some adjustments here. I'm going to show you how you can do that. So it would look like a typical book pulled in. And this changes every time I use it with someone new. The top right hand corner looks like a speaker. You can change the speaking rate. And it comes with Heather for free. But you can add voices. I love this. Very high quality, natural sounding voices. Adult and child voices. Voices with accents. And you can try it before you buy it. Play the sample first. $1.99 to $4.99. And then you own it forever for as many books, documents you pull onto your shelf. Really great. I believe I have Sally chosen. Yep, Sally. The big A and little a, here are your text settings. You can choose to have the spoken word and spoken line highlighted. Right now, all lines are visible. I can make it one line visible, or five, or three. 
So if they just need less on the page or sentence by sentence, you can certainly do that. I haven't updated to iOS 8.2, Maureen. Uh, the developer voice dream reader said not to update yet. So I typically, when a new update comes out for iOS, for all of my apps, to wait for them to catch up, I usually wait a few weeks. I don't take a chance, but good question. You can also change the font style. Many styles here, including Avenir Next and Open Dyslexic. If you're not familiar, Open Dyslexic, created by an individual who has dyslexia, heavier weighted tops and bottoms of the letters, and has shown for many students and adults with dyslexia, improves fluency, comprehension, and speed of reading. I have about 20 students I've shown this to throughout New England, and nationally, actually, uh, more than that. And they responded to it very positively. Many educators told me their reading scores went up. So great that it's here to expose them to. Doesn't help everyone. Dyslexia affects everyone differently. But good to expose them to, to see if it would benefit your student. And that means all books, handouts, worksheets can be in this font. You can also download it in other browsers if you're using a computer, just so you're aware. You can increase the text size here up to 90 points for your low vision students. Now, I'm going to put this down to no character spaces at all. So you see how close together this is, like a typical book. If I add character spaces and line spaces, now I have more reading space. Very helpful for students who have difficulty, who have getting a difficult time getting from the end of one sentence to the beginning of another, where they jump around. The color theme. <clears throat> so here you see I have the text color is white and background is black. I could make this yellow on black very quickly and easily. Oh, that's a bright yellow. There we go. So now it's yellow on black. And I can change this background color if I just need a light green overlay, for example, and then make my text color black. So very quick and easy to change the settings. Let's change the spoken word color to whatever you prefer. Let's see, I'll do a blue. And also the spoken line color. I'll probably make this yellow for now. And then the highlight color, you can create highlights and sticky notes. I'll show you how to do that. So you can change that at any time. The text to speech is excellent. I'll play that first before I show the other features. I think that maybe the reflector has stopped the volume from working on my iPad because it is all the way up. Um, but check out the voices because there is a light version for free. And you can check out those voices, very natural sounding voices. In the bottom left, you can search by chapter. Yep, I am in Voice Dream Reader. Thank you, Kimberly, for answering that question. So you can search by chapter. And below that, it says, 89 of 214. That's what page I'm on. If I tap there, I can get to whatever page I need to. Now I'm on page 67. The bottom right, that magnifying glass, is a great search feature. I can't remember what page or chapter, but I remember something that happened. Or I know the comprehension questions at the end, and I'm going to search for the answers instead of scrolling through pages. Very great feature there. Some teachers use this to have students search for vocabulary words. While you're in the app, if you get to a word you're not familiar with, you press and hold on the screen. I just press and held on the word church. And there's a little toolbar up there. Copy, define, highlight, note, bookmark, and pronounce. So if I drag these dots, I want to create a highlight. I want to remember this, just like I use a typical highlighter. Same method, I want to create a sticky note. Maybe this is something I need to remember. And I can have that play out loud, and I have that sticky note to get back to. This is also a great method 
that educators use to help students create sticky notes along the way for that metacognition. What just happened? What do you think is going to happen next? Did this ever happen to you? Have them stop at those sticky notes and review their reading. Jody, this app is $9.99, about 10 bucks, and it goes on sale often for half price. Worth gold, in my view. <laughs> so you can also get definitions if you need to. <clears throat> Have the words pronounced. I'm going to go back out and press the house and show you this is just a typical Word document. Decrease the font size here so that you can see. If I tap on the pencil, this creates an editable document. I can tap anywhere in here now and continue typing and then listen to it out loud. Another option is those PDFs. Pull those in and they maintain the format. So this looks like a typical worksheet that a teacher would share with a student. The pictures are there, but they can have this read out loud. If you right swipe, if you don't need the images, you can do that as well. Images don't come in with the Bookshare book at this time. The app developer is working on that, Michelle. Um, but certainly so many books available with the text-to-speech and they could have the book next to them if they need those images. But they do come in with PDF. So that is Voice Dream Reader. And going to try and get through as many others as I can for you this evening. But be sure to check out that online form for the rest of the week because we'll be discussing so many apps that are so helpful for students. The next one I want to show you is called Better Vision. I'm just setting up my iPad here to get ready to use it. So Better Vision starts out with four large symbols, black and white, so that you can magnify papers on the go, books on the go, or put this in an iPad stand. There's several out there so the student doesn't have to hold it and zoom in on the whiteboard for the instruction. Hopefully everyone can still hear me. So I just tapped on the magnification symbol. And you can see I could use the pinch zoom or that slider, and then I can pause it. My hand's shaky, so of course you would want to use it with an iPad stand. And the palette will let you change the color. go to the settings, you can change what that color is. You can choose black on white, black on yellow, all those things that you typically see in a CCTV. And this app is Better Vision. Thank you, Jackie. Now again, think of these apps on smaller devices. If they don't have an iPad, they have an iPad mini, iPod Touch, iPhone. They have a little handheld magnifier. Works very well. The next one I'm going to show you is called Notability. It's got the sideways keyboard here. Notability is excellent for note taking. Go back out to my bookshelf here. So for students who have a difficult time taking notes on their own, listening and taking notes at the same time, processing what's being said. They have a note taker for them. Many students, middle school and high school, college, they prefer to be able to take their own notes. Because if they have someone else's notes, they can't pick out what's important. Or sometimes even read what it is that they've been um, taking notes on. So this allows more independence. Similar to the Echo LiveScribe pen, if you're using that with a computer and a student. 
This app allows you to take notes, auto record, set it up based on schedule. So you see these nice colorful binders. You just hit the plus sign, create subject, create a new subject here, and done. I have my CTD folder. And I know I'm in that folder. If I tap on it, it says CTD at the top. I could be in creative writing. I could be in social studies, math. All of my notes are there. Tap on my CTD folder. And I can edit these, move the order around, change the color, etc. Very quick and easy with that edit button, top left. But for time purposes, going to start taking a note, top right, hit that pencil. Now again, I could be using a stylus, any of those adaptive styluses I showed you, or typical stylus. And what I do first, whoops, is hit the wrench in the top right. And it looks like my iPad didn't change position here. I'm going to choose my paper. I usually put a colored background for contrast. Some people like a colored background. And then you can choose lines, larger lines, smaller lines, graph paper for math class. Very helpful. And then I start the recording, that microphone at the top right. So now it's recording what I'm saying. I can start handwriting. I can choose my color and thickness. I can handwrite notes. If this was math, I could certainly be doing that. If this was graph paper, I could be graphing along. Uh, draw a picture. Maybe the teacher says photosynthesis. I don't know how to spell it, but I know it's important to go back to. I could highlight, erase if I make a mistake. So easy to erase. And with the plus sign, I can take a photo of the homework of that entire math problem on the board. And when I listen back to the recording, I'm going to hear step by step how to do it. Maybe it's a science experiment. Or you could take a photo of a worksheet and pull that in. And you can be working on that. You can write over it, certainly to complete it, or just include it in your notes. Sometimes teachers hand these out and have you filling them out. And of course, type. You can type text into these notes. So what's most important? Stop the recording and play back the recording. And when I tap on my notes, it plays that part of the recording. So I don't have to listen to the entire recording. I could take five or ten pages of notes, get to that page, tap on that part of my notes, and I'm going to hear what was said at that time. Very powerful. Students who need to review homework, etc. The square with the arrow pointing up, I can share this. Google Drive, Dropbox, save it, save the recording in my iTunes, many options, print it out. Very powerful app. This one's only $2.99. It's so helpful for students. <clears throat> and I'm going to squeeze in one last one. Clicker sentences. If you have students who benefit writing with whole words and word banks with text-to-speech, it speaks out loud as they're writing. You can customize this. You can choose those pictures from their picture library or take a picture with your iPad. You can have that model sentence on the grid or spoken. And you can have those word banks in sentence order, random, alphabetical. And you have over 600 grids to choose from. So unfortunately, we're at 5 PM. There is going to be an evaluation. Please take time to do that survey for your certificate of attendance. Join us for the week-long forum so that we can discuss some more apps, including these. And if you have any last-minute questions, please put them in the chat. I'm happy to answer. Information about the forum will be online. Center for Technology and Disability. If for some reason you can't find it, go to my website and email me. I'll get you the link. Thank you for attending. I look forward to speaking with you this week. The last app was Clicker Sentences. <laughs>